Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at St. Giles, Sunday at night. And, uh, we'll be following today the green orders of service, uh, which you should have. <coughs> We begin on page one. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Paul says, be imitators of God. Love as Christ loved you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. We pause for a moment just to reflect on those things we all know we ought not to have done, and those things we failed to do, and see God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. May the Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let's stand to give God the glory he deserves. Glory to the Lord in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I'll collect our prayer for today. <coughs> Fifteenth Sunday after church. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our first week. The New Testament reading is taken from the Epistle of James, chapter 3, starting at verse 13, going through to four, chapter 4, verse 3, then skipping to seven, at verses 7 and 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? 
Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the 30th verse. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were, because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum, where he was in the house. He, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because of the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord. Heavenly Father, may you speak through your word into our hearts. May you challenge us, change us and transform us to be more like you. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> So, it's the most anticipated night of the year. The venue is ready, the stage is set, famous people are getting out of their stretch limos, the cameras are out, flash bulbs are popping along, with the red along the red carpet. It's just like the Oscars, except this is the greatest Christian of the year awards. Lots of famous Christians have arrived and taken their seats nervously waiting to see if they'll get the award this year. 
There were bishops and archbishops, politicians, celebrities, each one thinking they will pull it off and win the greatest Christian of the Year award. But there's a shock when the golden envelope is opened and no one has ever heard of the winner. In fact, they haven't even turned up at the venue, too humble to think it could be them. Too busy getting on with the work of serving people in need, reaching people with the good news about Jesus. Now, we're all aware that there is no such thing as the greatest Christian of the year, or at least as far as I know. But there are probably moments when each of us might think to put ourselves forward for the title. Running through the list of reasons, at least in our heads, and looking down at all those lesser Christians who don't quite meet our standards, it might all seem a bit ludicrous, and yet it probably happens more than we would like to admit. You see, it's happened to the first disciples. These were the 12 who spent the most time with Jesus. They lived with him, they walked with him, they talked with him. And they've been with him for years, three years. And then one day, as they're walking along, they indulge in this Christian of the Year award. But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Not the greatest film star or the greatest strictly winner, but the greatest disciple. <coughs> and that in itself is a bit of a contradiction. You can see them walking along, Jesus out in front, leading his disciples to, towards Capernaum, and the disciples arguing about who is the greatest, each convinced that they are a better disciple than the one next to them. But Jesus gives them a shock as he teaches about true greatness. And I want to look at two points this morning. First, the path to greatness it's by following the servant king. No matter when we're reading something from the Bible, we need to look at where it fits in, both in terms of the book it's in, and also in terms of the Bible as a whole. And Mark's gospel is one of the four eyewitness accounts of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, his life story, so to speak. The disciples are slowly coming to realize that Jesus is the son of God, God's king promised from long ago, the Messiah. Now that they know who Jesus is, he moves to the next stage of his mission. And he's on the way to Jerusalem. Jesus is teaching his disciples. Verse 31 says, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. Jesus predicts what will happen when he gets to Jerusalem. He will be arrested, tried, crucified, and killed. Jesus, the Son of God, will give up his life for us. Jesus, the one who created all things, the one whom angels praised, the one who was seated in heaven. Yet he gave up all that to come to his, this earth to die for us. And last week we saw Peter's response to Simon Peter's response to this prediction that Jesus made. And what did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he had everything. Yet for your sake, he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Jesus giving his life for us means that Jesus is a truly great one. He is the one who deserves all our praise. We are humbled straight away by seeing what it took for us to be sent. Nothing less than the death of the Son of God. And I want to put a question to you this morning. Do you know this Jesus? 
today? Have you accepted what he did for you? It's hardly surprising, is it, that if our king is known as a servant king, that those who follow him are called to service. My second point this morning is that all of us naturally think that the path to greatness is through promotion. Putting one ourselves first, our needs, our wants, our desires, our skills, our talents. The pressure to achieve is immense. Whether it's in school exams, getting the biggest house, or the best paid job, or living in the nicest area we can find. But Jesus says that the path to greatness, being a truly great follower of Jesus, is to put everyone else before ourselves. And that sounds a bit strange to our ears. It's the opposite of what our culture and society and our family and friends tell us. If anyone won't be first, and yes, we all want that, he must be last of all and servant of all. In other words, the way to put, or the way to be first, is to put yourself last. It reminds me of a tractor race I recently heard about. It was all about the slowest tractor over the course, while still moving forward. And to win, you had to come last. That's no easy feat, is it? To put the needs of others before your own, you need to serve others. To follow, in other words, the example of the servant king. And it's completely counter-cultural. To consider others first, to consider others better than ourselves, to look out for others, to put them ahead of ourselves, to serve others. That is the way of the cross. And Jesus gives us the example of what this might look like. A child. Children were considered to be the lowest of society in those days. Not real, full people yet. Yet Jesus serves a child, welcomes him, takes him in his arms. Will we reach out to the lowest, the least, the lost? Jesus' final words in these verses are a bit surprising. And to be honest, a little hard to get our heads around. They are words of grace, encouragement for us who are called to serve and to put the needs of others before our own. They are amazing because our acts of service are not missed by heaven. They are noticed. And there is great blessing which comes through service. When we serve others, it's as if we're serving Jesus himself. It's like the parable Jesus tells of the sheep and goats. Truly, I say to you, as you did it to the one to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. When we serve one another, we are serving Jesus. When we welcome one another, we are welcoming Jesus. True greatness is not achieved by the world's standards, but by knowing the servant in and knowing and following his ways. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and servant of all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word shows us the way of the cross, the way to follow Jesus, the way to live life, where we give Jesus all the glory. May you guide us and encourage us to walk that path ourselves, putting others first and seeking to serve us each and every day. We pray in your name. Amen. to stand there to profess our faith in the words of the creed. Page four of our orders of sense.
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, God, God of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. We pray for the universal church. Thank you that the church is growing worldwide in some surprising places, such as China and countries in the Middle East and Africa. We pray for our archbishops, Justin and Stephen, our Bishop John, our Vicar Jeff, and all those who helped us in our spiritual life. We pray too for the ABC Church Vision Day on Saturday. We pray for Little Fish that meets on Tuesday mornings, for the home groups around the village. We pray for Yo-Yo, our local mission link, as they celebrate 25 years of working with schools in the York area, especially on next Sunday. We pray too for Steve Barlow and Helen Freeston, as they are on sick leave, and for those at Cotton Thorpe Methodist Church with changing patterns of worship. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our nation's leaders, especially for our Queen, the Prime Minister, and the government. This past week, there have been lots of changes in the cabinet. Teach each cabinet member your way forward. Help those who are in new offices to humbly learn and quickly grow into the new role you have prepared for them. Lord, inspire their decisions. May the Christians in Parliament continually have your insights as they rely on you to do marvellous deeds in the coming months and years. We pray for all MPs to act with justice and mercy and wisdom. We pray too for those involved in local government, both in York and on the parish council. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with huge problems and challenges in the world. We pray for Afghanistan, its people and the Taliban in leadership, as well as those who have fled that country and are trying to make a new life for themselves abroad, whilst they are still traumatised. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the natural world, world and the resources of the earth, thinking especially of those whose lives are devastated by famine and flood, even though these ongoing crises don't make the news headlines day after day. We pray for the Young Christian Climate Network relay to COP26 in Glasgow, especially as they pass through COP and Thorpe tomorrow. 
We pray too for the refugees and the homeless, especially as the weather is starting to get cold. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We pray for the people in our village, <clears throat> and in particular for those walking around the village with the scarecrow weekend. May they come to know you, Lord, and that you will bring peace and healing into their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We pray for all those in any kind of need the unemployed, or those living below the poverty line, the lonely, those sick in body, mind or spirit, and all those who work in the medical and healing professions. We pray too for those who have recently been bereaved, that they might find their comfort in you. Merciful Lord, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Would you please stand? Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace in a socially distanced time. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, you, Lord, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. 
Let us see God forever. 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 Let us see God you gave your son Jesus Christ to be our Savior. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you. With saints and angels praise you and say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit the broken bread and wine out for it. May be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread. Gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. <clears throat> so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection, until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day, when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. But with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught you, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are made, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come and lift your table, merciful woman, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs unto your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may have more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. 
<clears throat> we'll follow the usual pattern of receiving communion at the moment, whereby we come up in our household bubbles to the front to receive at the step. We remain standing. And when you receive the wafer in your hands, please step to the side before taking your mask off to consume. I will automatically dip the wafer in the wine before I place it in your hands. If you prefer me not to do that, please indicate before I do that. Hopefully you'll get the gist of how things happen.
So let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. And because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll turn to page 11. We say together the prayer at the foot of that page. Faithful God, in baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us, empower us by your spirit to witness and to serve, and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. quick announcements. Uh, tomorrow, as you may have picked up from our prayers, uh, the uh, Youth Network Climate Action uh, Pilgrimage is passing through Cottonthorpe. I think that's kind of the name it's given. Um, it's, uh, and uh, they will be stopping here for lunch. Uh, we're not providing lunch, but uh, they're popping in here. So we are going to provide teas and coffees. Uh, if anyone would like to be here to join them, uh, Trish is organising refreshments, and uh, well, she's organising for the for the pilgrims, not for us. Uh, so, but I'm sure you'd be most welcome to pop in and help, or or to have a chat as they travel. Uh, I think they're travelling from Tadcaster to York tomorrow, um, but they had did set off, I think, from Penzance some time ago. Uh, is that right? Yes. And uh, they're heading up to uh, Glasgow, where the uh, climate conference is taking place. So uh, you may want to see them. You can stand across the road and look on from a distance. It's up to you. I do want to just again highlight the journey through the, the Bible, 2021-22 uh, calendars, which are available at the back of church. These are from the Diocese and uh, Youth and Children's team. And uh, they're really encouraging, particularly for young family families um, from our churches. So please do uh, take one and give it to a family member or, you know, your great, great uh, grandchildren or whatever. <laughs> there we go. Um, other things that are happening, our 10.30 service this morning is uh, focused on worship and we'll be uh, spending a lot of time singing, which is something we've not been able to do for a, a while. Um, so uh, please, uh, if you would like to stop for that, please do stay behind. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention at this stage. Oh, yes, yeah, Saturday is the vision day. Um, if you wanted to have lunch with us on the vision day, uh, the deadline was Thursday, uh, but, I am sure there'll be plenty of food, so do not worry about coming along and joining in if uh, you haven't already booked. But uh, it's good to let us know if you are planning to come so that uh, we know to expect you. So you can do that by ringing the office or emailing Petra and uh, letting her know. So uh, thank you. Would you please stand for a final lesson? May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.